Okay, fellas, so that pretty much concludes my baseline test with this particular nozzle. I'm going to take it out and we'll take a quick look at it, but I just wanted to make note that simply raising my reservoir from this elevation to this elevation increase the output of the device because I'm using a siphon nozzle we went from 3.75 liters per hour to 4.16 liters per hour which means I only need 3.6 of these nozzles to achieve the 15 liters per hour required by Todd's machine and essentially I can use this information now to design a nozzle system that will operate at the specifications required. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nozzle off, I'm going to build a different stand for this particular burner, and I'm going to have two nozzles aimed into this burner. Both nozzles will hopefully be running at approximately 7.5 liters per hour, and I'm hoping to see a flame shooting out of this thing about two to three feet. Unfortunately, I don't have the air pressure I need. Um, I have a very feeble air supply here in this shop. So I'm gonna have to uh, figure that out right away and see what I can do. I might be able to rent an air compressor. Um, that's a thought. But I just wanted you to make note of this elevation, Tom, or uh, Todd, I'm sorry, that we're gonna have to elevate the fuel source to get the performance we want because any subtle changes in a siphon system will throttle that system. Any change, you add one inch of hose, I mean, it's, you're gonna get a subtle decrease in performance. The more hose you have, the less fluid is gonna pass through it due to plumbing losses because the siphon is fairly weak. Um, it's I don't think it's pulling a full vacuum and 14.5 PSI is very low for oil which would be the maximum we could achieve even at uh, 30 inches of mercury. So this thing might be cooled down enough to touch. But there it is, we are going to, uh, I'm assuming this nozzle would easily crank out 7.5 liters per hour had I enough air pressure. So that's my main concern right now is that I just don't have the air pressure. But nonetheless, um, the baseline nozzles perform flawlessly. This thing does get incredibly warm. The solder I used is a 450 degree solder. I did not want to use silver solder because I don't think it's going to be necessary at this point. Um, I believe that the incoming air will hopefully keep this thing around 300 degrees. We kind of want it to be hot. We don't want it to be completely cold because the Venturi effect exiting this nozzle causes a significant amount of cooling. Not a whole lot. Maybe I'm an error to say that, but the the expansion of the effect. Did I say Venturi effect? I'm sorry. Just the expansion of the gas exiting this nozzle causes a rapid increase in velocity and a cooling effect takes place as a result. So. There we are. This is the size of the burner I'm proposing to produce the 200,000 watts of energy we want. We have to remember we want this thing to run lean. It must glow a little bit. If it doesn't have a slight glow to it, we're not gonna burn the carbon out of there. We wanna be able to do that. So that's where we're at right now in the testing, Todd. I am going to immediately begin the construction of a double nozzle system. We have two nozzles sticking right in the back of this thing, and it ought to scream like an eagle after that. 200,000 watts worth.